so Tomoe Nagi is something that that I find a, a lot of beginners who are not even who have not even been taught the technique. They'll try it. I've seen it many times before. Scott used to do it even before he learned it, right? I think uh, many of you have actually tried it, you know, even though you've never learned it. So why is that? It's not an easy technique. I think, this is my guess, I think it's that people see it on TV, you know, when you watch uh, action movies, people do this and it just seems like a very dynamic, exciting throw to do. So people want to do it, but they don't really know the mechanics of it. So they end up falling flat on their back and then getting pinned, right? Which is what happened to Scott a lot of times. But now he's finally learning how to do it properly. So we're going to teach you guys how to do it. This whole week, we're going to be doing uh, different types of tomoenage. Now, it has to be said that the most common type of tomoenage you see in competition today are forms of yoko tomoenage, right? Which is a side tomoenage. The classical tomoenage, which is straight to the back, is not that common. But you still, you still do see it. It, it does happen. And it, still, it, it does still work. Uh, not as common as Yoko Tomoenagi, but it still does work. And we're going to start with that, okay? So uh, a classical Tomoenagi uh, usually is done from a sleeve lapel grip, right? So you, if you're right-handed, you hold like this. If you're left-handed, you hold like this. Okay, so that's the usual grip. So you could start from that. Definitely, you could start from that. I'm going to show you how I do it, which is a slight variation. Uh, those of you who have done randori with me will recognize it. Sarah knows what's happening when I do this. Okay? <laughs> she, she knows what's happening. So what, what I like to do, this is just my way of doing it, but um, you guys can try it, see if it works. But for me, rather than sleeve lapel, I like double sleeve. Uh, sorry, double lapel. I like double lapel. Okay? Not equal. I like this one a little bit higher and this one a little bit lower. Okay, so this is, my stance is left, and I hold here. Okay, so this is when I'm trying to do tomoenage. Not yoko tomoenage, but tomoenage. Okay, so double lapel. And uh, those of you who saw the video that I posted, there, there is a downside to double lapel, right? Which is Nigel's hands are free. This hand is free. This hand is also actually free, right? I'm not controlling it. I mean, he's holding me, but I'm not, I'm not controlling it. So when I try to throw, both hands are available for him to cartwheel out. So if I don't do something uh, very forceful and dynamic, he could uh, spin out of it. That's the downside. But why do I do lapel, right? As you guys remember from Ipan Seonagi, lapel grip is a stronger pull, right? If I do a Ipan Seonagi and I pull here, it's not such a strong pull. But if I pull here, it's a strong pull, right? Similarly, if I hold sleeve, it's not such a strong pull, right? There's a, a lot of distance between me and Nigel. Whereas if I hold here, it's a strong pull. I can really pull him on top of me, right? If I hold here, I find it takes a lot more to pull him. That's how, that, that's how I came about to doing it this way. Okay, so that's the first thing, gripping. But there are many ways to do things, so I want you to experiment, okay? You can try, you can try sleeve lapel. Maybe that works better for you. Maybe that works better for you. You can try this way as well. Some people, maybe they like to hold this way and do the, the I'm Everybody here is right-handed, right? right? Yeah, yeah, there's no left-handers today. So, I'm, I'm throwing with my right leg, okay? So, which is probably the leg all of you would prefer to throw on. But I adopt a left stance. So this is just how I happen to do it. So you, I take a left stance. The gripping is also a left stance grip. And then I throw with my right leg. Right? You might want to take a right stance. You might want to take a right stance. And, and then throw with your, with your left leg. It, it, it's up to you. But for me, I, for Tomo Inage, I like to take a left stance. And, uh, and, and then throw with my right leg. Just for your interest, because later on this week we're going to learn Yoko Tomoenagi, right? For Yoko Tomoenagi, I take a right stance. I take a right stance and I throw with my left leg. It's just, it's just how it worked out for me. But when I do Tomoenagi, I take a left stance and, and then, I, uh, and then I, I throw with my right leg. So that's how I do it, right? So Tomoenagi, <clears throat> uh, classically a lot of people like to fall in between Uke's legs. So, so what they do is actually, they actually drop right in between. 
which I find quite difficult to do, but you guys can try it and see whether, whether it works for you. But what they're trying to do is, they go here, and they drop right underneath like that. Okay, and then you see how I pull my jaw. I find that actually quite difficult to do in terms of execution. And what usually ends up happening when I try something like this, is like this, it ends up like this. And I don't really actually get him up. So I prefer to try to, what you want to try to do is like, like with drops your nagi, you want to go in deep, as deep as possible. But I find when I just drop down on, just drop down on my bum and try to get in between his legs, I end up not going deep. Maybe you can scoot in deep. If it works for you, good. But I find it difficult. So if I try to do that, I end up like that. And I'm not going to be able to throw Nigel. He's, he's far away from me, I'm not in. I find it difficult. But some people get it. So what I do is, the way I figure it is, I drop like this. So actually this leg is in between my legs. I'm not going in here, in between his legs, but actually here. I'm still falling straight back. I'm still falling straight back, but I end up like this. Okay, and I find this is quite deep. So I, I still fall straight back, but with Nigel's legs in between my legs. Okay, that's what I do. So I end up falling like this. Okay, so I find this is quite deep. I have him on top of me and I can throw him. So that's what I, I, that's what I like to do. You can try that, but I do urge you to, to experiment. Later on, when you go with your partner, try. Try different configurations. You can try to go right in between, or you can split your legs here. Okay, so for me, let's, let's So that's the tomboenage, straight over the top. Okay, one more time, we'll try to do it slowly. I'm here. Like that, straight over the top. Okay, that's, that's tomboenage. Now sometimes, sometimes Uke ends up going to the side. Does that make it a yoko tomboenagi? No, right? The yoko, which means side in Japanese, doesn't refer to where Nigel falls. It refers to where I fall, right? So in yoko tomboenagi, I fall to Nigel's side. But in this case, sometimes, sometimes I fall down here, but he ends up here. That doesn't make it yoko tomboenagi. It's not a yoko, that's still a tomboenagi. Because I fall straight back. I fall straight back when Nigel happens to be inclined towards that direction, so I throw him here instead of straight back, right? It's still not a Yoko Tomenage, right? Those of you who have seen Yoko Tomenage knows that I'm gonna fall towards Nigel's legs, which is not what I'm doing here. So what you guys can do when you partner up with your partner, hold your partner, first of all, try different configurations of grips. Right? I told you I like to do it this way. It doesn't mean you have to do it this way. You can hold here. Maybe you feel comfortable doing this. Maybe you feel comfortable doing this. Maybe you feel comfortable this way. Or maybe you feel comfortable this way. It's up to you. Try. Try with your right leg, try with your left leg. Go on. Yeah. It's a little bit difficult. If you take a very high grip, you, you should do sumi guys. Too small. No space. So if you. So the question is, what do you do if you're high grip? Maybe sumigaish, okay? It's like Nick. Nick does sumigaish, right? So for you high grippers, people like Kang and uh, Afik and Jamila, maybe sumigaish is a more suitable technique. But, but try this. Try this. And uh, the first step is I want you guys to practice the entry. Don't worry yourself about the throw yet. All right, that's part two. We'll work with that on that later. But right now, I want you to try just to get the entry and see if you can get in deep, right? If you fall down and okay is far away from you, then you know you've got it wrong. Okay, so let's say you, you're doing this, you fall and you're like that. And you're so far away from okay, he's nowhere near. How am I gonna lift him from here? I can't. 
Right, then you know you've got it wrong. You've got to come in deep. So, you got to come in deep like that. If you're like that, then you got it right. Okay, so you need to be able to come in deep. Either in between his legs or you split. You split and he's in between my legs. The way I do it is I, I like him to be in between my legs. But maybe you can just drop down in between both legs. It's, it's up to you, right?